An important assumption when you're building statistical models or performing statistical tests is that the observations in your sample are independent of one another. If not, when you fit a model, the estimates of the model parameters won't be as efficient as they could be if you took that lack of independence into account. More seriously, the significance of many test results will be overstated. The p-values will be too small, and you may end up rejecting a null hypothesis when you shouldn't. This is particularly serious when data is recorded sequentially over time, as in the next example I'll show you. What you see in this data sheet is measurements taken from a chemical process of the concentration of some key quantity. The observations have been taken about once a minute, and I'm wondering, are the measurements from minute to minute independent of one another so I can treat this as a typical random sample of concentration measurements? Now, a good way to test whether or not the data are independent is to ask, are consecutive observations correlated with one another? If you take an observation in one row and an observation in the row before, are they independent or do they tend to be similar? Is a large observation followed by another large observation and a small observation then tend to be followed by another small observation? We would call that autocorrelation. When a variable is correlated with itself but at a specific lag, such as one minute before or two minutes before, that would be called an autocorrelation. Now, a good place to test the assumption of independence in stack graphics is under the Relate menu, and the choice I want here is multiple factors, multiple variable analysis. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put into the data field first the variable concentration. Underneath that, I'm then going to type the word lag, open parentheses, and then concentration comma 1, close parentheses. Lag is an operator that basically takes a column of data and looks back one row. So what I'm going to do here then is look at the concentrations in a specific row and correlate them with the concentrations one row back. When I press OK, I'll see a couple dialog boxes. I'm just going to take all of the defaults and what that will do is that will bring up an analysis window with three tables and one graph. Let's look at the graph first. Let's double click and look at this matrix plot. What you see here is a plot of concentration versus the lagged values. In the upper right corner of that plot you see each value of concentration plotted on the y-axis and the lagged values plotted along the, the x-axis. You can see a pretty nice positive correlation between the y and the x, indicating that in fact that there is some correlation, or at least appears to be, between observations separated by one minute in time. Now to t actually see whether that correlation is statistically significant, I'll go back to the tables and look down here in the bottom left. Here it's actually estimated the correlation and the estimate of the correlation coefficient is about 0 0.5 which is a pretty good correlation. Of real interest is the p-value here 0 0.0000 and since that p-value is very small it indicates that at any typical level of significance, there is definitely a significant correlation between the observations one minute apart. Now that we've seen some correlation between consecutive observations in the column of concentration, what do we need to do? Well, one thing we could do to get ourselves a random sample, a sample of independent observations, would be to take samples farther apart in time. We saw that observations were correlated one minute apart, 
If we reduced our sampling frequency, perhaps sampled five minutes apart, we could perhaps get ourselves something much closer to an independent sample. And I'll demonstrate that in just a minute. A second approach would be to use a method that specifically accounts for the lack of independence. In a future video, I'll be talking about the use of ARIMA models, both for control charts and general forecasting purposes. But in this video, I'm going to talk about the first approach, taking samples farther apart. But the question becomes, how far apart? Returning to the measurements of concentration, I now want to determine a sampling frequency that I can use such that I would, will get a sample of independent observations rather than a sample in which observations are correlated with one another. The best place to do that in Stat Graphics is on the Describe menu. Under the Time Series section, Descriptive Methods. This lets you take a column of data and calculate various statistics that are specific to data collected over time. Now there are a number of options that I can set on the way in. Again, I'm going to take all the defaults. And now I can actually see the data. Here is the data, the measurements of concentration. And you can see simply by looking at the data that they're not independent. Below the basic data plot is something called an autocorrelation function. An autocorrelation function computes the correlations between observations, first one row apart, then two rows apart, then three rows apart, and so forth. Now you can notice that for quite a while, as I compute observations one minute apart, two minutes apart, and so forth, the correlation remains fairly high. In fact, any bar here and the height of the bar represents the estimated autocorrelation. If the bar is outside these boundaries, then that correlation is statistically significant at the 5% significance level. The way these correlations die out, you notice that they really don't disappear completely until observations are something like 20, 21 minutes apart. So it would appear that if we sampled maybe once every 20 minutes, we'd probably be safe in assuming that the observations were independent of one another. Now I can also verify this by going back to the multiple variable analysis procedure. Pressing the input dialog button on the analysis toolbar, and instead of plotting observations and asking for the correlation at a lag of 1, I'm going to ask for the correlation in a lag of 20. I'll now press OK, and you can see that 20 minutes apart, it's much more of a random scatter of concentration against the lagged values. If you look back at the estimated co correlation, the p-value is now above 0.05, and therefore not statistically significant at the 5% level. If I wanted to use a statistical procedure that assumed I had an independent sample, I'd feel much better sampling my process once every 20 minutes than once every minute.